Uh, let's start. So I am uh, Cheng Eng Xiong. I'm uh, teaching part two of this linear algebra uh, with Professor Dipu. Professor Dipu is the course coordinator for this semester, implying that uh, he will help to handle all the logistics of uh, your quiz and such, coordinating uh, the collection of the results. Now, for my part, I will also be uh, doing quizzes, so I will explain my role later on. Uh, now, um, maybe some uh, introduction. So, I've uh, been in NTU for about 17 years. Uh, basically, I teach typically uh, the third and the fourth year on signal processing. Uh, but now, they are asking us to teach the linear algebra, which is uh, very interesting for, for me anyway. Uh, because uh, part of the, the course will be uh, used in uh, digital signal processing. Now, uh, I've already released uh, the course notes, so I would now go through, actually today would be uh, mainly the logistic part of the part two first. So please go to the new announcement if you have not done so already and uh, take, take the, the, the course notes. What we will see is that uh, in the, you will see something uh, important, which is the lab schedule. Okay, so I'm going to bring up the PDF file of the lab schedule. Now, so this is the, the schedule for the course. Basically, we have two quizzes, just like in the first two uh, the first two quizzes you had from week one to week seven. From week eight to week 13, uh, we'll have two courses, uh, two quizzes. One will be held on week 10, 22nd of October. And we'll have split you up into two different lectures so that uh, you need to be physically present. And uh, the groupings are FS1 and 2 for LT6 and FS3 and 5 for LT9. So please come on that day, maybe about 10 minutes before time, we'll start promptly and it'll be an hour quiz. During that time, you'll take pen and paper, stapler, calculator, it'll be closed book. For quiz, for the last quiz, you'll be held on week 14. That means uh, after, the, after the last teaching week, typically in week 14 is the study week and week 15, 16, 17 is the exam week. But uh, for this course, because we are not going to have exam, so we are going to hold the quiz at week 14, which is on Monday, uh, 11 to 12. And then again, there'll be two lecture theater. So it'll be the same idea. Now, the lab schedule, kindly note that uh, I have changed FS1 schedule. FS1 was originally slated to start on week nine on a Monday. But uh, if that happens, it means that actually you are going to start next Monday. So you, it won't, you won't have enough time uh, to go through the lectures. So instead, we have uh, moved you up backwards by two weeks, implying that you have week 11 and week 13 for FS1 for lab three and four. Now for your course, uh, because there's no exam, your two quizzes and your two labs are very important. Yeah, you will count towards the continuous assessment. And uh, these marks will be accumulated and given to Professor Dipu uh, for your uh, final grades. Okay. Now, because we are doing almost everything online, at least for my part, uh, what it means is that I'm going to do this. Uh, we are going to cover it in this schedule. Uh, we will do week 8 and 9 for tutorial 6, 10, 11 for 7, 12, 13 for 8. So depending on how fast we can do it. Now, uh, we are going to conduct the tutorials in this hour, as in the, the two hours that is slated for lectures. So uh, then you'll be thinking, what about the lectures itself? Uh, you realize that I have already recorded all the lectures and put it up in YouTube. So you have to do the self-study before attending the tutorials. Uh, it means that 
you have to, to read all this in this schedule at least. I mean, you can do it faster, of course, but uh, at least in this this time frame. Okay, so where are these uh, online videos? You can see the playlist. So maybe I'll click the playlist. And for those uh, who have been in my tutorial class, uh, you will know that uh, this, uh, this exists and uh, you can uh, see it from uh, this YouTube playlist. You just click on and you have chapter six, seven and eight. So, so you, if you want to see the whole uh, details of this uh, YouTube channel, which was created by me for this particular course, then you just click on to linear algebra into the playlist and then you will see tutorial four, tutorial three, tutorial two, tutorial one as well. Uh, that means, in fact, during the tutorials, I've already recorded uh, what I discussed in the tutorials and put it up because everything was in Zoom, so it was relatively painless. Chapter seven, chapter six, and chapter eight are here. So if you click onto chapter eight playlist, uh, then you will see it in this order. So, so in fact, you, you'll see that I have broken down the, the videos into very short uh, segments, recordings. So you are talking about five to 10 minutes worth of recordings. And, and the information on the right will show you exactly which section, subsection, as well as which slide number. So if you map this to uh, the, this, what do you call it? Uh, this uh, table, then you'll know uh, where you should be, which video you should be watching, okay? So maybe some questions first. Prof, there is no chapter five. Okay, so, so, I'm, so I'm going to, to tell you why is there no chapter five, right? So, so you'll be looking at this and says that I'm starting chapter seven, six, seven, eight. Now, uh, if you have this document, this is the document for the syllabus of linear algebra for computing. And in this document, you will see on the first column, the chapter heading, then the okay. topics heading. And you will see that chapter one to four was what Professor Tipu has covered. Now applications, uh, I guess you can think of it maybe in part as the labs that we have done. Uh, so that's why uh, chapter five is basically maybe the labs. And then now we are in chapter six. So six, seven, eight is, will be orthogonality, least squares, eigenvalue, singular values. And chapter nine will be applications. Okay, so I hope I answer your question on chapter five. So is there three tutorials per week now? Uh, so we, what will happen on Monday and Thursday is this, I will be here in Zoom and we'll be going into the tutorials as well as the lab. Okay, so the idea is that every week I will take the two hours to do the tutorials and the lab and uh, we'll do it slowly and I will here, be here to answer your questions. So feedback is, will be, will be uh, great. And, and then uh, mostly there'll be a lot of there'll online learning by yourself. Now, please do not be absent for the labs. If you're absent, you must have a valid reason. If you have a valid reason, we'll let you take the next lab. That means the other classes lab, and then you will join the other classes for the quiz. And we can keep on doing that uh, because there are many other labs uh, that's going to happen. Uh, now, if really that, if you, if you manage to miss one quiz which you cannot take, then maybe we'll do it on week 14, but uh, that is not advisable. Okay, so someone asked, how about our original tutorial sessions? Okay, for my tutorials, uh, I'm, I'm taking three tutorial classes. These three tutorial classes that I have take, been taking during Zoom will not be conducting. Why? Because I'm going to use that these two hours, Monday and Thursday hours, the two hours to do the tutorial. So, so you have actually a much more time uh, with the tutorials on Monday and Thursday than you would have otherwise. Uh, Professor Dipu uh, uh, is considering what will he be doing for his one hour. So for week nine, at least week nine, uh, for, for week nine, I'm going to continue to do my tutorial because I have not finished uh, tutorial four yet. So for this week, for this week, week eight, sorry. For this week, I will be doing uh, as per normal. 
as well as Professor Deepu. So do go to your tutorial, either online, which is my classes, or Professor Deepu, which is face-to-face. Uh, -face. Now, then you can ask about uh, what will be happening in your tutorial uh, after that with Professor Deepu. Anything else you want me to talk about? So in the last 15 minutes, I've been talking about logistics. Content. Okay, content. So the class schedule is here. You should be looking at this class schedule, which I have just shown you. And you should be going into part two, which is uh, a 44 megabyte file. And basically, I'll show you the content of this 44 megabyte file now. It is this folder. Okay, so you have all the slides here. You have the tutorial here, six, seven, eight. And you have the lab here. I'm only releasing lab six. Uh, lab seven will be released in a few weeks. And then uh, you can try. You should also be looking into these Python examples. And then you can look into Python six. And then uh, I got a TA to go through uh, what I wanted at least you guys to know about uh, all this. Okay, and then you can try. Maybe I will open it up now for you to take a look. So what you will see is uh, this. Basically, the, the, the TA is called Zhang Shu. Uh, during the holiday, we got him to, to write a series of Jupyter Notebook. And then uh, basically, this Jupyter Notebook will teach you uh, at least what is required for lab three and lab four. But since you've already done lab one and lab two, I guess uh, you'll be fine. Okay. So this Jupyter Notebook is uh, very nice. It's uh, very comprehensive. And uh, so you, you you can go through. And in fact, some of the questions like here, uh, sorry, some of the solutions like here will be exactly what is required in the lab. Okay, so maybe I'll pause here now to take questions. Okay, if there's no questions, then maybe I would uh, look at the lab now. Okay, because I many students have feed feedback to us to say that the lab was challenging. So I will go to to see uh, the lab for, for lab three. Okay, let's kill this guy. In this lab, uh, please read first. And basically, what we are going to expect you to do for the lab is this. You should finish the entire lab uh, exercises before you come to the lab. During the lab, of two hours, you are going to be given a Jupyter Notebook uh, question set. You take a look at the question sets in the Jupyter Notebook. You'll be asking you questions related to what you have learned, as well as what is this lab manual of chapter six. And then you are supposed to answer them in this Jupyter Notebook. You can then save the Jupyter Notebook and save it uh, uh, and then as a data structure of some dictionary and then upload it. And you are supposed to do that within the two hours. Where do we find all the contents like the Jupyter Notebook and class schedule? Okay, that's the question. So you go to NTU Learn Engineering Maths here. You go to your content, you go to part two and you go to this zip file. When you take a look at this zip file, it is very big. It's 44 Mac. So let's unpack this guy. And then now you can see the lab. So if you go to the lab, you'll see the Python examples, which was what I showed you just now by Zhang Shu and the lab manual. Okay. Now during the lab itself, you can if you create your own uh, notebook for your this solution. During that beginning of the lab, we will give you the Jupyter Notebook for the particular lab that you are in. So every lab, 
For example, there are four groups. Every lab will give you a slightly different Jupyter notebook. Maybe the values are changed, maybe the questions are jumbled up and so on. Okay, does that answer your question? So please read this. Uh, and then now I'm going to try to, to do this lab at least. Uh, so, so there are a lot of things that you must read, uh, but maybe we'll, we'll just begin uh, a few of these so that, you know, when I'm doing this with you, you'll be not so, uh, you'll be a little bit easier. All right, let's close all this. So uh, this morning, uh, I, I tried to do lab six by myself. Okay. And uh, let's, let's read the questions and then you'll see how I've been doing it. Let's, let's introduce lab six very slowly. So we're now, we're about, we have half an hour to talk about lab six. All right. Basically, the first thing is we're going to ask you to develop your own Python functions to do something in task section four. What are we going to ask you to do in section four? We're basically going to say that We'll give you a table, one, two, three, four, five rows, one, two, three, four, four columns, right? And then we say that we are giving you this table. You want to initialize a data array, and then you're going to read this table up and remove the last column. Okay, so what did I do? So I was, uh, uh, I mean, we are going to do the most basic things. So we are not going to do anything fancy. So the first thing is we're going to get NumPy in and then I'm going to create an array five by four, one, two, three, four, five, because I have five rows, four columns. And then for each of the rows and columns, I'm going to enter each row. So this is row zero, row one, two, three, four. Remember Python uh, index from zero. And then the columns are zero, one, two, three. And then the values are exactly what we have in this table. Now, once I've gotten the values in, then the, so I've done question 4A. Then the last remark says, remove the last column of this uh, table. So I basically call it A1 and I only copy all the rows from column zero to three, meaning that oh, zero to three means I'm copying zero, one, two. So the Python indexing uh, goes from zero and here will be three minus one. Okay, so it'll be zero, one, two, not zero to three inclusive. So, okay, let's run. So cell run. Ah, so because I never run this guy. Cell run. So I've imported Python cell run oops cell run so i've done and then now i do cell run so i'm now reading i've read the array sorry i've initialized the array and i've copied the the last three columns or the first three columns okay then the second one will be a questions that is more theory. How do you measure the similarity between the two person based on the norm and the dot product? Okay, so you, you haven't understand the norm and the dot product yet, but the idea is this. We're interested in the person. We have the person's weight, height and age. We know that the temperature of him fluctuates. So in fact, this column of information is not a useful column of information to identify the unknown person. We know that maybe a year later or a week later, the temperature will fluctuate. So even though we have recorded the person's temperature, this is not useful. So that's why we are saying that if you are going to verify or find who's the unknown person against a table of person, then maybe you should only be looking at these three. Now, of course, again, age will change year to year, but let's assume that we are talking about within a few days or weeks. The weight and the height will change. Height will change very slightly. Weight might change depending on whether he has eaten or not. So the question is, how will you measure 
whether the two persons are, are, are similar. So we are finding out who's the unknown person. And basically, I mean, your simplest exercise might be just compare this value against the nearest value. And then we've realized that this is actually Charlie because the height is very close and the age is identical in this example. So if you are doing in this, when you're doing it from this idea, then basically you're just comparing the elements of a vector to the other elements and find the absolute difference. So that's one way. But there are other ways. So to find similarity, you can use something called the dot product. Okay, uh, and that's what we're going to use in this uh, table. All right, so to use the dot product, uh, then what are we going to do? We're going to ask you to implement my norm, my dot, and my cosine similarity. So read the lecture notes and you understand what we are, what is the formula against these three uh, functions or for these three functions. So, okay, so what do I do? Right, my norm. What is my norm? So maybe uh, I will open up my norm now and then you can take a look. And I have my norm. Right. So the idea of norm, of a vector, norm is just a very uh, fancy name to say length of a vector. The length we're talking about is uh, Euclidean length, long, Euclid, I mean, the physical length, if we are thinking about this uh, not concretely. And we remember that if we are talking about length, and especially when it is a right angle triangle, then we can use the Pythagoras theorem to say that if we have two sides of a triangle, for example, this is V1 and this is V2, then this length is nothing but V1 square plus V2 square square root. So the norm is nothing but the length or the, back, or the magnitude of a vector. So we know how to do it in R2. So the word R2 here means uh, that we have two coordinates, X and Y, or X1, X2. Now we have R3 means we have three coordinates, X1, X2, X3. Then this is uh, the, the space we are living in, right? We have uh, X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. Now we extend the the Pythagoras theorem from R2 to R3. So then we know that this is the equation for norm of R3. So what about norm for Rn? So this is it. So if we have n dimension, then we are doing nothing but each element square, sum all of them up and square root. So the norm is just this equation. So once you have figured out this equation, then uh, how do you implement my norm in Python? Okay, so I'm going to close this guy now. So, so if you just remember, norm is nothing but length. Length is nothing but Pythagoras theorem. And then we are going to write the equation for my norm. So I'm going to send a vector in, let's call it an array. Okay, let's call it some generic name. And I'm going to sum I'm against all these elements in this array. And then basically to play with anything, I have to make the sum to be zero first. And then I'm going to look against all the elements in the array. So you are going to use, in here I use some fancy function called nd iter. Okay, so it's numpy dot nd iter, iterator of numpy array. And basically what it does is that it picks up each element in the array. And then I'm going to square it here. And I'm going to sum it and I'm going to keep on looping it. And then finally I get the sum. Okay, you have a, many different ways to write this kind of iterator but uh, this is the simplest one I can, I think uh, will work. Finally, when I'm done, I want to get the square root of because uh, that's what the equation says. So let's compare the equation. So we are doing nothing but, we are doing nothing but summing each of these square and finally performing the square root. So that's it, that's my norm. So this is uh, about five lines of code and you are returning it. So to use it, it will be something like my norm value equals to my norm array. So this is what's happening. So let's write a test. 
So I'm going to write a test with three elements, one, two, three. So it's easy. The norm of this row vector is one square plus two square plus three square square root, which is nine plus four plus one is, nine plus five is 14, square root of 14, I guess, right? 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, yeah, square root of 14. Okay, so what do I do? Test one equals to my norm test one. So I basically send this guy one, two, three inside here. And then let's see the answer. All right, so cell, right. So square root of 14 is 3.74. And then of course for sanity check, uh, what did I ask you? I'm gonna ask you to check against NumPy linear algebra. So basically, uh, all these are very standard functions and uh, NumPy has already implemented them for you. But we, we didn't want you to just use NumPy. We wanted you to see whether you can write your own routines. Okay, so the answer is my norm is 3.74 and NumPy is 3.74, then we are fine. Okay, so let's look at the question again. Where am I now? Implement your own routines of norm and dot product. Name your routines as this. And then blah, 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 go and check. How come for norm is at x plus times x okay so okay let's try this maybe i should write it this way would this be better because uh, let's look at the equation again what does the equation ask us to do each is each element okay so i'm going to uh all right so how am i going to i mean if, if i'm going to ask you to write a program to do this what am I asking you to do? I'm basically asking you to sum, sum, right? V i square, i equals to one to n. So this is what I'm asking you to do. And then to do this, uh, well, what do I what do I need you to do first? Because you're going to add this guy plus this guy plus this guy. So you, um, where am I going to put this in? I'm going to put it in sum val. But when before I start, I should set it to zero first. And then after that, the next step, I'm going to, so this is the first step I set to zero. The second step, I will now set it to V1 square. And the third step, I'm going to set it to V1 square plus V2 square. Right, and then so on until the last guy. So this is why the the for loop is looping against. Uh, they add the sum of the square, then square root. Yeah, correct. So I I'm adding all here first, and then square root. So actually, I mean, maybe the the idea is that maybe here is a key to understanding how to do our labs. You must find the equations that we are interested in, break it down into very small parts, and then and then compare the implementation of the code to, to compare the implementations of your code to the equations itself. So this is what's happening. Okay, okay. And in fact, once you have this understanding, it's actually very nice because uh, then your, your, your understanding of the, the equation is precise. Yeah, exactly what, what you think you should be doing, you're doing it. Okay, maybe let's try the dot product. So norm is norm is easy, uh, is this. So let's let's see if I can get the dot product. Maybe I'll do it differently now. Okay. I'm going to show you the dot product first. Uh, we are going to try backwards, okay now guys. So my dot is a my dot is a function that takes in two arrays and do something. So let's go and figure out what is it taking, is it doing? So I will have two arrays. Let's call this X and then uh, let's, let's call this X1, X2 and X3. And let's call this Y, Y1, Y2 and Y3. Okay, I didn't tell you but to do dot product that two guys, the two vectors must be the same dimension. Otherwise you cannot do dot product of these two 
uh, vectors. All right, so we start with sum val equals to zero first. And then what are we going to do? We are going to, okay, again, right? If you are confused with this guy, then I'm going to do it this way. We are going to, to take x and y in the array and you are going to multiply x times y and you are going to keep on summing it. So what am I going to do? I'm taking x1 and then multiply by y1 and I'm going to sum. Okay, sum. So far okay? So I've just done this, this line, sum val equals to zero on top. So this is the first step. This is the second step. Clear? So this is, yeah. Now I'm going to loop, right guys? I'm just going to loop. So, so x, y of m, p, d, n, d, eta. So you have to figure out what n, d, eta is doing. Basically he's saying, let's go and extract from the array the first element, followed by the second element, followed by the third element. Okay, so then the second element is, and the third element is, okay. So how does it know that there are only three elements? Why? Because ND eta, yeah, can read the data structure of X array and know that he's in starting from index zero, followed by one, followed by two, and he finish. And then when we're done, then all we are returning is this guy. So we return some val. So now we want to write the equation for some val. It is nothing but xi 0, 2, 2. Oops. So let's, 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 let's play nice and we are going to use an index from 0 to 2. Okay, so this is, this is the dot product of the vector x and y. And I call it my dot. So what do I do? I'll send two vectors in. So now I'm going to send two vectors in. And the vectors are one, two, three. So we are going to call him uh, A, I think, test A. One, two, three, test B. So this guy is one times two is two. Two times four is eight. This guy, three times six is 18. And the answer is, I hope it's 28. So they get it right? Okay. So now let's run this guy. So I'm, I put my cursor here, go to my cell, run the cell, go to the bottom and read. My dot is 28, NumPy is 28. Okay, so at least for sanity check, uh, I got my answers correct. So, so if, if I'm not happy, if I'm going to change this to 2, then now, of course, the answer will change. And the answer is 30. Is it right? And of course, the answer is 30. Correct. So, so that, that's the idea. So what will happen in the quiz is we're going to ask you to write all these routines. We'll give you different values. And if your implementation is correct, then of course, uh, you will tell us the right answer. And then we know that your implementation is correct. Okay, so this is my thought dot product 6.1.3 so let's see the dot product so the dot product is u dot v okay guys and then u dot v which equations i mean you can read through and the equations we are implementing is number 15 here can you see u dot v is equals to each element of u multiplied by each element of v summing up when we generalize uh, we are getting equation 17 Okay. All right. So if you understand u dot v now, I think uh, then uh, we are then you can implement norm and uh, dot product. So you all must go through the lecture notes. When you have gone through the lecture notes properly, try the Jupyter notebook and do it like what I have done here. And it, for each questions, starts to do them. And this is what you will get. You realize that it will take you a couple of hours to, to go through it properly, but once you're done with the entire lab manual, then take your Jupyter notebook and go to the lab. Because during the lab itself, 
we're going to change the question slightly. Maybe we'll give you a different table. We'll ask you to do some dot product and norm, and then we're asking you to save the answers. That's all. And then, of course, we're going to ask you some additional questions. Uh, and then we're also asking you to save your implementation so that we can study your implementations to see that if you have done it correctly. So this is how we are going to do the labs. From the next lecture onwards, I would begin to do the lab, like what I'm doing now, showing you my implementation. And then I also will then show you the tutorial itself. That's how we will conduct this course. All right. Okay. Thank you.